Hey guys, a couple years ago, I did the nurse printer conference that was supposed to be held in person, but because of COVID, everything went online. As a result, we had some great sessions and we were able to include people from across the globe. So I'm actually going to start opening up this series to you here in the, in the Nurse Minder Nation. What you're going to see next is the interviews that I held with these really amazing, talented nurses who are forging their own way into the world of entrepreneurship creating their own business, using the tools that they've learned through nursing to expand into areas that you may not have considered. So why am I sharing this with you? Well, there's a few reasons. I know that today's workplace is exhausted, burnt out, frustrated, and they also want to honor all of the training that they did in their many years of schooling to become a nurse. With that, I'm going to share with you the interviews from 2020 just when the pandemic hit, but also in the description box below, I want you to follow up with their story and see where they've transitioned to or how they've expanded or how they're growing their ever, ever present entrepreneurial journey. And so you're going to see a series of nurse printer interviews so you can see, listen and learn from them and myself included. And then if you'd like more information, you can head on over to that website. Enjoy this interview. So welcome to your Nurse Minder 2020 conference. In this session, we are talking with Patricia Wofford. She is an LPN who is a nurse, writer, and content strategist. Healthcare organizations, brands, businesses, and publications turn to her to use the power of words to create binge-worthy content. That converts, by the way. Additionally, she teaches other nurses how to use their nursing skills and expertise to start a freelance writing business and get paid to write. Welcome, Portia. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the time. So I am Portia Wofford. Um, I am a nurse. My background is in home health care, long-term care. So I have, right currently, I do um, staff development and infection prevention. So right now is a very busy time for me. Um, but I started writing actually when I was a home health nurse, I had, I had to come up with a creative way so that my patients could understand what I was teaching them. Cause of course with home health, you're trying to keep your patients out of the hospital. Right. And so I came up with a creative way and my way was because I love to write was to just simplify it for them to meet them where they were so that they could understand, you know, the medical terminology, I think as nurses, healthcare professionals in general, when we're speaking to, I call them, you know, like lay people, we tend to forget they don't understand the medical terminology. So I kind of broke that down for, where they can understand it and um, really affected the patient outcomes because their rehospitalization dropped drastically. And I started blogging and then I realized I could make money from writing. You know, I can use my nursing skills and my nursing education to make money from writing. And so I started out doing some blogging and then I kind of transitioned to a content marketer because I thought that my clients needed more than just a blogger. They actually needed to understand that content is definitely marketing and they need to understand how to do that. And so I developed the PW agency, which is a digital content marketing agency where we basically just, like I said, we use the power of words to help our clients connect with their audience. That is beautiful. You know, we talk about health literacy all the time in healthcare and how our medical terminology is above what they should be at, you know, when we speak to our patients, grade five level and below in order to make sure they understand. So you identified this gap early on in your practice and you didn't just leave it at that. You actually did something about it. Yes. Yes. Um, I think as nurses, you know, we kind of adapt. That's just kind of second nature to us. And we're very caring, we're nurturing, and our patients come first. And I knew that I needed to do something to help my patients. I didn't just want to continue to go out and see them and they continue to go to the hospital. And so I wanted to really make a difference in my community. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you did. You'd mentioned that there was definitely a change in patient care outcomes. Yes, yes. And I was very, very proud of that. Yeah, and you should be. I'm proud of that too. Thank you. That's pretty passionate to me too. Communication is one of my backgrounds and I'm really passionate about that. So you started blogging. Was it the blogging that started to become a source of income for you? Or was it the blogging that led to copywriting that became a source of income? Um, it was the blogging that led to, of course, when I started, I did not know that this was essentially a thing. Um, so I kind of Googled, as we all do, you know, I surfed the Google streets, as I like to say. And I realized that, um, you know, I can make money from it. And so after Googling, finding, you know, Facebook groups with other nurse writers in it, 
doing, you know, different things, I realized I could make money. And so I started reaching out to potential clients and said, hey, you know, I'm a nurse. This is my background. I also write. I, you know, I see that you have a blog. You haven't updated your blog in two years or however long it has been. They haven't updated your blog. I would really love to write for you. I think that I could bring something for your audience. And then that's how I started getting clients. Oh, that's fascinating. So you were actually doing cold calls. Yeah, cold emails. Yeah, <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have the, I did not have the nerve to actually call people. You know, I'm very introverted. So I would just, you know, send out an email hoping and praying that, you know, someone would give me a chance. And, you know, eventually I got a lot of no's at first, like a lot of no's. But eventually, you know, just that one shot, that one chance that I got, to me, that was that opened up other doors. You were committed to that because, you know, a lot of no's, as we all get them when we first start out, sometimes it's because we don't really know how to market ourselves. We don't know how to talk about what we do. We don't know how to tell people the value that we bring. And so those no's are almost like lessons along the way to help us refine our messaging. Right. What kept you in the game looking for that, that one hit that was going to change your life? Because I knew at the time I was really burnt out with nursing. I think a lot of nurses, you know, they can, they can, they can, you know, meet me there. They understand where I'm at there. And I was really burnt out. I knew that I was working a full-time job, nursing job and a PRA nursing job that a lot of nurses do. You know, I knew I wanted to spend more time with my son. You know, I wanted to be there. I did not want to miss baseball games and basketball games and piano lessons and, you know, award shows because I had to be at work. Mm -hmm. um and you know he was at the age then where he didn't quite understand that I had to go to work and you know to him mom's just not there you know and so my goal was I'm just going to get rid of the PRN job if I can just get rid of the PRN job I can make some money then I'll be good and I was able to do that through my writing you know I was where I was able to get rid of the PRN job and still work full-time and then I was able to my full-time job said okay this is a stressful job I was still doing home health at that time I want a job where I can work Monday through Friday, be off the weekends, be off the holidays, not so stressful, but I know I needed to supplement my income. And, you know, I was able to do that with my writing. I was able to let that job go and find another job where I could, you know, take that, where I could work Monday through Friday and be off the weekends. And I have to worry about picking up extra shifts. Mm -hmm. And that was my goal for writing. Just my son. I just kept, you know, just, just that one basketball game, that championship basketball game that I missed. That was it for me. Yeah, yeah, you gave me goosebumps. I'm a mom myself, and I certainly have had those same thoughts as I've kind of dabbled off and on over the years in business. So um, you talked about some roadblocks saying, you know, getting no's at the beginning. Once you started to get people to recognize the value and you're starting to write, did you come across many more roadblocks or did it just all seem to fall into place for you? Um, yeah, a lot of times the clients did not, um, they couldn't connect the fact that I was a nurse and a writer, they thought, well, maybe all she can write about is healthcare, or all she can write about is nursing. So I kind of ha- had to train myself to write about other things. You know, I had to take courses and buy books and read articles and sign up for email lists for content marketers so that I can, you know, they, as a nurse, you always have to educate yourself. And when you have a business, you always have to educate yourself. And so I kind of wanted to be, I would say I'm a generalist. I can write about anything. You give me a topic and I can write about it. Um, and that was a roadblock, just kind of saying, I, I don't want to just be known as a nurse writer. I'm a nurse and I'm a writer. You know, I don't want to be just in that box of being a nurse writer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so you specialize in healthcare and helping people in healthcare copyright, but it sounds like you've branched out a little bit or you're trying to branch out a little bit into some other areas. Yeah, I'm very passionate about um, anything that affects black women. You know, um, that I'm very passionate about that. I love to talk about millennials, you know, um, because I'm a millennial myself. I I think we're very intriguing. Um, I love to talk about millennials as well. But healthcare is definitely my thing. I love healthcare. Um, Just it's fascinating to me. You learn something new every day. And with healthcare companies um, and healthcare brands, like I said, they tend to forget that the everyday person is reading this. And if you want the everyday person, if that's who your target is, you have to break it down. And I always say I untangle their terminology for them. So that they, you know, the everyday person can read, like you said, fifth or sixth or seventh grade reading level. So mm-hmm. I, I really enjoy that. That's awesome. Well, maybe we could take some time here and you can showcase a little bit more about your business and give us a bit of a presentation. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I would love to, I think your audience um, and anybody who's watching, I'd love to talk about content marketing. So I'm going to give you guys some tips for anyone who wants to go into marketing, writing, uh, copywriting, whatever it may be. I have uh, some tips for you to make it a little easier for you. That sounds great. 
I'll probably make some notes here. And if I have any questions, what I'll do is I'll just raise my hand so you know where I'm at. Otherwise, I'll let you talk and I'll ask my questions at the end. Okay, sounds good. Okay, I'm going to mute my mic. Okay, guys. Um, so it's 2020. It's time to get your content jumping, jumping. This is Destiny's Child. For whoever, this is like my favorite girl group of all time. I mean, look, it's Beyonce. Who doesn't love Beyonce? So content marketing is your secret weapon to getting more subscriber sales and building authority. What do you want to achieve? You want to gain premium clients to grow your brand. You want to immediately stand out from the crowd. You want to establish authority in your industry and you want to create name recognition. While you're in the perfect place, this is a no club zone. I don't like to be in presentations where there is me, 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 me. I actually want to teach something, so this is going to be no fluff. Actionable tips that you can apply immediately and proven content strategy and marketing methods. This is for you if you're a healthcare entrepreneur or company who wants to get more engagement and visibility, you're struggling with finding the right words to use to connect with your ideal client, you're absolutely done with no leads or, new, or no new clients, you're ready to quickly apply tips, take your content from law to take my money, and you want to make a huge difference in people's lives on many different levels. Who am I? Well, I'm Portia Waffer. I'm a nurse, a writer, and a strategist. And why you should listen to me? Well, I'm a self-taught copywriter and content strategist. When I, my teachers taught me to use my words, I turned them into an entire poetry exhibit in the middle school library. That's a true story. To this day, my, middle, my exhibit is still in the same middle school that my son goes to. I discovered I had a knack for connecting people to my words when I won my first 4 age speaking contest in the fourth grade. I have nine plus years of experience as a nurse. I learned to untangle healthcare medical terms to drastically decrease my patient's rehospitalization rate and educate nursing departments. I've written engaging and high performing content for various platforms and my wow worthy words have been seen on that coveted first page of Google. I use my words to untangle your confusing thoughts and terminology and turn them into binge worthy content and click worthy call to actions, content strategies that connect, convert, and convince. And so I already told you guys a little bit about my story of how I became, how I became into writing. Um, and that's basically content marketing. I use content to connect, to convert, and convince. At that time, it was, it was to convince my patients that they need to take care of themselves to, to stay out of the hospital, but that's definitely content marketing. So on today's combo, we're, we have three hot topics. Number one, what the heck is content marketing? Number two, why do you need it? Number three, tips that work. So what is content marketing? Content marketing is a long-term strategy that focuses on building a strong relationship with your target audience by giving them high-quality content that is relevant, relevant to them on a consistent basis. That's for Mr. Neil Patel, who is my mentor in my head. I love Neil Patel. I stalk him on LinkedIn. I stalk his blog. I, I actually learned a lot from him. I actually, you know, subscribe to his email list and I, everything that he says, I pay, pay close attention to. So what are examples of content marketing? So content marketing can be blog posts. It can be articles. It can be newsletters. It can be email sequences that you send out to people on your email list. It can be social media posts that you post. Why do you need it? Well, every great brand needs valuable and relevant content that really connects with your audience. A good content marketing strategy ensures you know exactly what you're facing. You take the time to plan out the major aspects of your strategy. Good content will build trust and improve your brand recognition. It establishes a strong brand identity. It helps influence conversions, which helps get money in your pocket. It optimizes, optimized content helps improve your SEO, which is search engine optimization, which is essentially how you land on Google. It's essentially when someone Googles your name and you're on the first page versus the 50th page of Google. It increases engagement and visibility, which means more leads for you. And it proves that you have the secret sauce. So 60% of consumers enjoy reading relevant content from brands. 82% feel more positive about a, about a company after reading customized content, and 70% feel closer to a company as a result of content marketing. And I got this graphic from Life Marketing. Website conversion rate is nearly six times higher for content marketing adopters than non-adopters. 
quality content marketing can significantly help improve your website conversion rates. Whether that is someone buying something, whether that's someone signing up for a call with you, whether that's someone going to your blog and they say, okay, I like this blog post, let me see what else she has to offer. Content marketing provides conversion rates about six times higher than other digital marketing methods. Um, after reading recommendation on the blog, 61% of online consumers in the U.S. decided to make a purchase. According to um, or 74, 74, 74% of companies surveyed, content market has increased their marketing lead both in quantity and quality. Content marketing sets. Content marketing gets three times more leads than paid search advertising. So 78% of consumers prefer getting to know a company via article rather than ads. I mean, how many times have you been scrolling down Facebook and you just see the same ad over and over and over? I mean, they're really doing a good job of content marketing because, you know, they're, they're finding you, they're targeting you because it's something that you've done in the past and you've read in the past that is the reason that ad keeps targeting you. But eventually you might click on the ad, you know, if you've seen it a hundred times, you may click on it. And then you go to their blog post. But for me, I'd rather get to know a company by reading their blog posts, their social media posts, and then them throwing an ad out there to me. So content marketing is quickly becoming the best way to attract and convert your customers. 70% Organ um, of organizations believe that custom content um, is interested, that we have custom content, it makes people build a good relationship with you. Content marketing helps to improve conversion because it allows you to connect and educate your audience your leads and your customers. So not only are you building that trust with them, but you're also saying you're resourceful. You have something that you can give them that you're not really asking, you're giving them something in return. And then that builds that authority and that expertise that you're looking for. So I'm gonna give you guys some content marketing basics. So number one, um, these tips, you can find more of these tips on my Instagram page, which is Lipstick and Stethoscope. I put these tips up all the time weekly. Number one is a content calendar. A content calendar is a working document, and it can be a spreadsheet, it can be an actual blank calendar that you have used to schedule out content. Move this down a little bit. Content calendars empower you to plan your content strategy by giving you the ability to visualize what your strategy will look like over a period of time, to stay organized and plan content around important dates in your industry, and also to find holes in your content strategy. Content strategy. So when you have your calendar, like for me, I actually use an actual physical old school calendar. I have a planner, I open up my calendar, and I write down what I want to write about. And as I look through the months, I can say, oh, so this week I only have, you know, two things that I'm talking about. Let me add something else in there. You know, people are used to seeing me, you know, post content on my, on my social media at least three times a week. Let me add a little bit more in there. It helps you with brainstorming. So when you start organizing your content, chances are that um, it'll give you a boost of creativity. You can monitor your audience engagement. You can analyze their feedback. This will give you some insight into their preference, preference, and you can apply that to your content strategy. And basically what that means is like you should install something like maybe Google a Analytics on your website or have some type of pixel, and you can see what people are reading or what they're not reading, and you can brainstorm more content around that. So if you're writing about why nurses should wear black scrubs versus white, and then you have another um, topic, why nurses should get their MSN versus whatever, and you see that, okay, everybody seems to like this post about why nurses should wear black scrubs instead of white. Let me write some more articles about nursing, you know, how nurses can be comfortable in their scrubs, you know, just different things like that. It helps you to plan it out. So have specific days set aside to create content is helpful. Now, if you're like me, you might be a procrastinator and you might wait until the very last minute. But honestly, I found that that stressed me out the longer I waited. So for me, I try to plan it out. And so usually I do it on a Sunday. Sundays are my days to plan my content. I'll sit down for the week and I'll say, okay, this is trending this week. Let me do something on that. So right now, you know, everyone's talking about COVID-19, the coronavirus. Well, two months ago, I started realizing that the coronavirus was going to be trending. So two months ago, I started writing content on coronavirus and I dropped an Instagram ITV series about how you can use the coronavirus to build visibility as a healthcare entrepreneur. So now two months later, what I'm doing is I'm just repurposing that same video. 
I'm putting a little bit more content into it. I'm getting more hits on it because more people are familiar with the coronavirus than were two months ago. So in nursing, you guys know we have something called care plans. That's a thorn in most of our sides in nursing school. So I like to say in content marketing, you should have a care plan. You should create a care plan in your content marketing. And this is what your care plan should look like. Look like. You should define your target audience. When you're defining your target, target audience, you're describing one person. One person. Think of one person. Give that person a name. My target, my person is called an avatar. My avatar's name is Penelope. And I like Penelope because I always said if I had a daughter, I would name her Penelope. So that's my avatar's name. And with Penelope, what you're doing, you're thinking your audience is one entity. So it's not 100 million people. It's just that one woman. I'm just writing to that one person. Each person is an individual. You're going to individualize your content. You're going to tailor it to speak to one person. Get to know this person. What does she like? What does she dislike? What are her problems? You know, what does she do for a job? How much money does she make per year? What does she do when she's not working? You're going to, you know, just, it's just like you're going on a date. You're meeting someone. You're going to, you, you got to woo this person. So you got, you have to learn everything that you can about this person. You're going to understand their problem. The first thing to do is to understand their pain or problem that your potential client has. Then you're going to tell them how your product or service solves their problem. And there are two ways to determine pain points. You can simply ask. So you can do surveys. Um, you can at, just ask questions. You can use Google or you can observe. You can, I love Facebook groups because I like to go in there and people, I love to be in the groups with other nurse entrepreneurs because someone always has a question. How do I start writing? I want to start a med spa. How do I do that? You know, someone's always asking questions and, I, and you just sit in these groups or wherever you are and you observe the things that people are asking. And if it's something that you are an expert in, then you know that you have a good business idea or you have good content that you can write. Is your content serving your audience? No one cares about you. This is not about you. It's about your audience. How is it helping your readers? Are you answering their questions, addressing their concerns, or are you just entertaining them? And that's fine. Like, you know, you, you might get your blog or your, you know, content marketing might just be for entertainment. And that's what your clients like, then that's fine. Keep the individual person in mind as you work through the content. If something doesn't serve them, change it as needed. Remember, content marketing is about building relationships. Write a bold headline. What makes a great headline? It's targeted to your audience. It starts a conversation. It creates major curiosity. It makes the reader stop dead in their tracks. And it pre-frames your offer if you have an offer or whatever you know your product or service may be. Writing a good headline. You can use the for you formula. And I got this from Mr. Neil Patel, which is use plus urgent plus unique plus ultra specific use numbers for some reason numbers seem to convert and for some reason odd numbers seem to convert better than even numbers you're going to use what why how and when use emotional um adjectives to draw your reader reader in and you're going to give away the big benefit on average five times more people read the headlines than they do the body copy the purpose of the headlines to make people stop dead in their tracks and read or watch whatever it is that you put in front of them. So the secret to a great headline, great headline is one that connects emotionally with your ideal customer. Good headlines target emotions, and that's usually out of fear or desire. So these are some formulas you can use to optimize headlines for conversions. You can use the how-to. So how to achieve something specific, how to achieve something specific without whatever their pain point may be. Numbers warnings and then at the bottom we have lists so numbers um and an adjective and ways to achieve something specific headlines you're going to think about the pain points and address them in your copy you're going to dive deep and you're going to use proven formulas so here's some examples so um i have a good friend who has a medical cannabis business and so i was using her as an example so you're a medical cannabis consultant specializing in helping patients with rather aches and pain Right now, your client has to go to the doctor to get prescription for pain pills. This is a pain point for them because the wait is always hours long. So your headline can be how to get rid of aches and pains without spending hours at the doctor. Right there, you know, I targeted their pain point and I'm, I'm letting them know I'm going to teach them how to avoid their pain point. 
keywords. Everyone gets a keyword. When considering keywords, ask yourself questions. This question, what is my target reader Googling? What are they putting into Google? Places to include your keywords to build up your SEO is going to be your URL, your body of content, and your site's metadata. So your, the metadata is the stuff behind the scenes that when people come onto your site, they don't see. So that can be your meta description. So that's when you're writing your blog. There's a blog um, on your blog. And I'm, specifically, if you're using WordPress, WordPress is really good for SEO. You can go in and you can write keywords. Um, you can go in pictures. You can go into the pictures and the pictures of when you're doing the picture captions on your, your blog, you can write keywords. The point is you can't trick Google, so don't overdo the keyword usage. You know, every sentence, you should not have a keyword. Google will essentially punish you for that. You can link build. So link build helps to um, link to other helpful, credible articles. Use inbound links, which is the same thing as backlinks. Get people to link to your content by writing good content or by asking. Make sure your content is credible, relevant, and written properly. And make sure back, your backlinks are, quick, cred, uh, are quality and relevant to your keyword. And the, um, to get people to link to your content is, let's say you interview someone. and um, Or you are interviewed once by someone. And you say, hey, I'm going to share this article that I wrote for you. Do you mind sharing the link on your website? Do you mind sharing the link to your email list? Or if they're writing a, you know, they're writing something and it pertains to you, they might put a keyword in there and they can link to your website. Length does matter. Sorry, fellas. So no less than 500 words. Longer blog posts usually perform on, a, on better on every level. For healthcare, the number is between 2000 and 2150. But I always say, you know, don't get so stuck on, like, you're like, oh my God, 2,000 words. Don't get so stuck on that. I've written articles that are like 500 words and had like 30,000 people to read it. So it depends on the quality. All in all, make sure your content is binge worthy. Make sure that from the headline to the end, they cannot keep their eyes off of it and they want to share it. They want to share it to, you know, their, their friends and their families and other nurses or whoever, the, you know, their people are. A pick says a thousand words, so include relevant picks, include keywords in your pick file name, the meta description, the alt text, and the image title. And the bonus, header tags, so use subheads as transitions throughout your content. So when you're writing, and I, I'm referring to Google Docs because I love Google Docs, when you're writing, you have the H1, H2, H3, those are your header, ta header tags. Use those th throughout your content because it breaks up your content. Because you, we know people have short attention spans and, you know, we're in a social media society where you can just Google and get everything really quick and you want to keep their, you want to keep them. So you're going to, you know, use the white space. That's why you're using the header text to break it up a little bit. So as they're reading, you know, their mind is kind of subconsciously triggered. Okay, well, this is something new that I'm about to start reading. You're going to have a powerful call to action. Call to action. You're going to keep the call to action brief yet strong. Make your reader focus on the most important parts of your offer, so which is the product, the service, the content, and the benefits they'll receive. So why are so many healthcare entrepreneurs still on the content struggle bus? Because they don't know how to use their words. Let's just simply put it. We don't know how to use our words. Your readers, you're going to use your reader's voice, not your voice. As healthcare professionals, we tend to use medical terminology and lingo that the everyday person doesn't understand. You get everything that you learned in English lit classes. It's okay to use contractions, but it ain't at the beginning of the sentence, any ellipsis. Use everyday speak. Your copy should be conversational. No one cares about you. Don't speak in third person. Speak directly to your reader and use the word you. When I say don't speak in third person, um, you're just going to speak directly to that person that you're speaking to. Now, if you're writing like a editorial where you're supposed to be talking about your personal story or something that's fine but you're going to use a lot of use in your sense you're not going to say well we nurses you're going to say nurses or you're not going to say when we go to the store you're going to say when you go to the store are you tired when you go to the store do you feel overwhelmed not when we go to the or when i go to the store i always feel overwhelmed we go to the store we always feel overwhelmed you're gonna you know you're speaking to them when that person is reading they have to think god she's talking directly to me Readability, which is basically the complexity of words and sentence structure, the ease which a reader can understand, 
So in the U.S., the average readability score is from the seventh to eighth grade level. So most people are comfortable reading text that is understood by 11 to 13 year olds. Here are some tools that determine your readability. The Hemingway app is a good tool. And um, these are other good tools. Use words your client, readers, and audience understand. So this is nothing political right here, y'all. It's not political. I just like, I really like this picture and it's really good content marketing. Um, when they had their debate and I was looking at it and I was like, gosh, she really captivated the audience. She had like some good stuff. And this is why when you're reading this, your content before me, boring, confusing, out of place, all tangled up. The reason I call her a lighter, light them up Lizzie. And the reason I say that is because, you know, she just captivated the audience. You know, she demanded attention. She controlled the crowd. She was easy to understand. She knew who her audience was. Structure is important. You're going to use bullets in your content. Three to 12 is the magic number. I would say more, probably around five is okay. You don't want to get, you know, to overwhelm people too much. The formula should be the, fe the feature plus the benefit plus the, and plus the meaning. The feature, what it is, the benefit, what it does, the meaning, what it means to your client. These are some examples. So I'm selling a pen case and these are my bullets. Three piece set so you can um, have all your favorite pens together in one place, which means you'll never be left without a pen again. Three colors so you'll have the perfect color you need, the, the perfect color you need when you need it, which means you can get projects done faster and chrome and silver construction for durability so you can drop it and not worry about breaking it. I have my feature, I have my benefits, and I have what it means to my clients. Structure, we're gonna use white space. I'm gonna put a little white space right here. Don't use choppy long sentences. Try to break long sentences down to two or three if possible. It's okay to use a broken sentences. And it's okay to use broken and one word sentences. So, you know, I might be saying, I was walking down the beach. It was rainy, old, dark, scary. You know, use that. Use headlines and subheadlines and use your keywords. Use active and not passive voice. And this is examples, passive. Nurses are adored by their patients. Active, patients adore their nurses. Passive, the, doctors, the doctor was called by the nurse. Active, the nurse called the doctor. So you don't have to live your life with content that doesn't convert. And this is like my favorite show. So look at your words. They don't connect. Your sentences don't make me want to open my wallet. You don't understand the power of ellipsis and you don't know how to use your words, but that's okay. I can fix that. Sorry, my light went out. <laughs> but don't just take my word for it. Check my receipts. So these are some organizations that I've written for, that I've been involved in. I've spoken with, I've spoken at about content marketing. These are some podcasts that I've done. I do a lot of podcasts that's dealing with content marketing, especially related to healthcare content marketing. And if you are a nurse and you want to get into content marketing and you want to start a freelance writing business, I have this quick start guide, how to start your freelance writing business in 30 days. It's very simple. We talk about um, how to stand out in the crowd. We talk about how you can build your portfolio. We talk about um, how you can, you know, escape those terrible clients, you know, because, you know, you don't want to have bad clients. And then we talk about a small, kind of how to land a client with a marketing strategy. And if you have any questions, this is where you can find me. Please shoot me an email, shoot me a DM on social media. I will reply back. If you're on LinkedIn, follow me on LinkedIn. Say, hey, I'll say hey back. I love talking to people. Or you can just email me at hello at pwenterprises.co. That's it. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I wrote down some questions here that I think maybe the audience would write it or ask if they were here live. Um, and I wanted to say thank you for telling me I can start my sentences with and and the. <laughs> hey, that, and that depends on your audience. And if you're writing for a medical journal, you might not want to start with any, but you know, no, if you're writing, you know, I was doing some SEO optimization. I'm learning about that right now for my YouTube videos. And I was going back and transcribing some stuff and I'm like, wow, I got a lot of run on <laughs> sentences and a lot of them start with and and but. So I was really happy to hear that. <laughs> Okay, here are some questions I wrote down. 
Uh, first of all, I wrote down, this isn't a question. It was about branding and connecting with your audience. It's um, so important. I talk about it in my presentation as well. Others talk about it as well. If you come into business for you, you're not going to make any money. You have to be there for them. Right. You need to know your target market. So I'm really happy that you mentioned that as well. So a few things you've mentioned, um, 